Hey YouTube, so it is your girl Rachel and I'm here with the part two of my breast augmentation, I guess, experience, vlog, whatever you want to call it. So if you hadn't seen the first video, make sure you go ahead and look. This video is just going to go over all the questions I think you guys are wanting to know the answer to um, and more. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. Okay, so... I have my questions here in my notes and I'm going to go over them. So if I look away from the camera, you know exactly what I'm looking at. My phone. Why did I do it? So I did it because as a teenager, I've always wanted a bigger chest. Didn't get it. They never came. <laughs> and um, I just basically wanted a bigger chest. And I have Micah. I breastfed and then they became deflated uh so that's basically why why i wanted it and the opportunity presented itself so hey i went for it all right so what type of implants do i have and what are the cc's so i'm looking at my card because you get a card with your implant it's an implant card so i have mentor memory gel smooth round high profile 450 cc's and my surgery was on 3 11 2021 before i had surgery i measured my bra size was a my bra size was a 34 b after surgery this is according to victoria's secret and target um i wear a 34 double d which i don't think i'm really a double d i just think that their bras run small and i'm gonna have pictures so you guys can kind of see what i was working with and obviously what i'm working with now <laughs> so how much did it cost i chose to get silicone implants which are more expensive than saline um my choice i mean obviously it's a personal choice i got silicone because of the look and the feel um, cause they feel extremely soft. Um, and I know silicone has changed over the years. So, you know, all the negative stuff that's behind silicone, it's not like that anymore. Um, I do understand why women get saline. I totally get it. I'm not knocking that at all, but I just was not interested in having the possibility of having ripples in my chest because of the saline. Um, I just didn't want all of that and I wanted the texture in the field to feel like a natural, natural breast tissue. My surgery was $5,900. Um, I think for silicone, I mean for saline it's like $4,900, it's like $1,000 less. Um, how did I fund my surgery? So at the time, um, the person I was dating, you fill in the blank. <laughs> How did I find my doctor? I didn't go to one person for a consultation. So initially, like I said, this has been something I've wanted to do for a long time. Went to a physician, a surgeon, plastic surgeon here in uh, Columbus, Georgia in about 2013, I would say. I went because one of my coworkers, she had went to the specific a doctor's office same place where I got my tummy tuck but it was not the same doctor and I went to see him for a consultation uh his bedside manner was horrible very 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 horrible um it wasn't like a horrible visit but I just wasn't he didn't give me that warm and fuzzy and when you're doing like an elective surgery you really need to feel like comfortable so at the time I was on a weight loss journey as i'm always on and i think i was about like 180 pounds and i had told him that i was in the process of losing weight now i will say he was straight up with me with this he was just like don't get surgery until you want to lose weight <clears throat> until you get to the weight that you desire so i was like fine so basically i lost the weight and i never went back i was not interested and then the f then two years later or a year later i decided to give get a tummy tuck the whole breast augmentation went totally out out the window so then i saw a video um morgan i can't think of her youtube name 
she did a video on her breast augmentation surgery she went to a doctor in the atlanta area and i was like you know what i'm gonna go to her doctor because i mean she looks good you know so i went to her doctor nice establishment i mean really nice plastic surgery center like i felt really comfortable they had the highest technology of stuff they took pictures of you and they showed you what you would look like with bigger chest like it was super cool however doctor was great however he told me that i needed a lift now personally and i'm not trying to be funny or um put people in a box but personally this is just off of experience and doing my research if you go to someone and they are a certain type of person and you do certain types of looks that's basically what you are really really good at so again he's a white surgeon nothing wrong with that but a lot of his client base were white women so no shade but white women you know they like bigger boobs that sit super freaking high and i was not interested in that i wanted bigger breasts yes but i wanted them to have a natural fall did i need a lift no i did not um the first doctor i went to he said i didn't need one and he apparently felt like i needed one i didn't want that so i left you know the consultation over and i forgot all about it so the the opportunity presented itself last year like i said i had the funds so it presented itself and i was like you know what i'm just gonna do it like i've been thinking about this thinking about this thinking about this and i did my research and i you know came to find the a plastic surgeon here in columbus georgia and he's been in practice for over 20 years um african-american i went in for a consultation like i really didn't just know i was gonna do it again i have to you know really feel comfortable to do something elective and um this will be my third elective surgery the first is lasik second is tummy tuck and this is breast augmentation i have to feel comfortable so came in i had ideas of what i wanted and the size and all of that stuff and um he basically you know looked at me and did my measurements and all that stuff and marked me up and was he was just like i know exactly what you need i'm just like what <laughs> He was just like, you know, with your body structure and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay. He was like, I know exactly what size, what shape. So he, him, he brought out, well, the nurse, he got the nurse and she brought out like 400 cc, 425, 450, 475 cc. So of course you put on a little sports bra and whatnot and I'm trying them on and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know about this. So I settled on 400. Cause to me, I was like, man, these are big as hell. And I'm standing there like this and doing all of that. Like these are huge. So I settled on, no, I think I settled on like 425. So cool. I was pleased. Like his bedside manner was like so, he just made you feel so, so comfortable and calm. So I was like, let's do it. So I went ahead and booked the surgery. So let's fast forward to the surgery day itself and my experience in the surgical center because everything is attached at his office. So um, came in, took a pregnancy test, you know, had my mask on, all that stuff because it is COVID. Micah couldn't come in with me. He had to stay in the car, which was fine. The surgery itself overall was like 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, I was there for probably like two and a half hours, but I was the first patient of the day. And, um, oh, let me rewind a little bit. At my pre-op appointment, I decided to get 450 cc i decided to get 450 cc because after talking to friends that have had this done and some of my internet friends they're just like 400 425 girl that's little and i was like what i don't want no big ass titties and i was like nah it's it's not what you think and i'm like okay so i read i settled on 450 all right, so back to the hospital, I mean, to the surgical center. So I'm at the surgical center and um, 
I meet with, you know, I have my nurse who's assigned to me basically, the anesthesiologist. He comes in, um, real cool guy, like he's super freaking tall. He had to be like 6'5. And I'm just looking and I'm nervous. I'm just sitting there scared. I'm holding my phone, like, oh my God, well, I can't believe I got myself into this. And um, so he was just like, you know what, after looking at your chart, um, I just want to go over some things and I was just like, you know, okay. So he said your hemoglobin level is pretty low. And I said, okay. And I'm all these thoughts are running through my mind. Like I go to my annual appointments, get lab work done every year. And I have never been told that my iron is low. And he was just like, I want to be straight up with you. He's like, I'm just going to be straight up with you. If you were in a car accident, he said, it probably would be fatal to you. And I'm like, what? He said, the car accident necessarily might not be fatal, but if you were injured and you lost a lot of blood, so from you having an accident and getting transported to the hospital and you losing blood, you could, prob you could probably die of a heart attack. So now I'm like, why the F is he telling me this? And I'm about to go under, right? So I sit there and I'm thinking, and I'm just like, oh my God. So I'm sure he could see the fear in my eyes. And he was just like, you're fine though, you are good. We will make sure that everything goes well for you. Do not worry. But I really want you to know that you need to start taking iron pills immediately. And I was just like, okay, bet. So I had mixed feelings. One, I was, I appreciated that he told me. And then two, I was mad at my primary care doctor because I really like her. And I'm just like, WTF, my iron didn't just get low overnight. So anyway, moving on, he gave me, you know, my cocktail and my anus, you know, my arm. Um, so I'm getting really, really calm. So now the surgeon, he comes back and it's like the team is there. And we're all like in a circle and we're holding hands. And he was just like, I want to say a quick, quick prayer. And I was just like, okay. I was like, okay, so, you know, he said his prayer. I mean, the prayer was like, amazing it was just to the point where he was just like you know lord thank you for bringing me my client miss simmons you know i'm here to do your work to bring her happiness got my hands like it was just like the best prayer ever and after that like the fear the anxiety the worry it just literally it was gone so i went to the surgical room you know they wheeled me in of course i'm basically like out and um the nurse i can't think of her name i really think it's Brittany. she um was just like i'll see you when you wake up and i'm like okay so she i wake up and it's literally like an hour later i'm wrapped up and i'm looking you know i'm wrapped all the way up and um the doctor comes around he said you did good everything went well i was able to get 450 in and he was like your chest cavity is kind of small i wouldn't have been able to get any bigger so that was the perfect size um and then he said he wanted to speak to micah he wanted to introduce himself and, and just speak to micah and he went out and he talked to micah and so be it so on i went on went on home so basically at my next day appointment they took off the bandages and um my I could feel the implants up here. So imagine if you're watching, put your hands up here. Implants up, <laughs> up here. And they look crazy. Like the shape was horrible. And he was just like, you're fine. Do not beat me up. You're fine. They're going to fall and settle. I promise you. And I'm just like, uh, uh, if you freaking say so, you know, you're the surgeon, you know. So um, he didn't want me to do anything. I couldn't go back to work until um, I went to my seven day appointment. I wasn't able to pick up Bella. I wasn't able to walk Bella. I feel like I could, but he didn't want me to. He didn't want me to strain myself. Of course, you don't want to get blood clots. I had to monitor my breathing because now having the implants, it felt like there was just something sitting on your chest and it was harder to breathe. Um, the soreness, 
it felt like you did a whole bunch of push-ups but it wasn't like excruciating pain never once was i in excruciating pain yes there was discomfort because now i'm a stomach sleeper i sleep on my stomach and i sleep on my side so can't sleep on your stomach i couldn't sleep on my side either because everything was tender so i slept in my reclining the good old trusty handy dandy <laughs> reclining chair i've had that reclining chair since Micah was born because I used to sit in that chair and rock him as a baby. That is so funny. I've had that chair forever and it's still, still rocking. <laughs> anyway, so I slept in my reclining chair probably for the first week or two. I'm scary. I'm a very scary person. So to get me in my bed was like an act of Congress. Cause I'm like, I don't wanna burst them. I'm thinking all this crazy stuff, which didn't happen, of course, obviously. So I had no real pain. I was able to, you know, lift my arms like this and do that and whatever, nothing. Cause I would catch myself doing stuff and I'm like, oh my God, my arms are supposed to be like this. I'm not supposed to move, you know? So I was scared cause I'm watching YouTube videos and all these girls are just like, I can't even lift my arm up here. And I'm just like, what it's gonna be that bad nah child i was reaching at the top shelf and i'm like oh shit i ain't supposed to be reaching <laughs> so that's really basically the experience i went back to work that i had i think i had surgery thursday or friday and my follow-up was the following thursday or friday and i went back to work that monday i went back to work i was fine um some people knew what i had done because they're my friends and other people were you know, they was looking and, you know, word got out. Rachel got her titties done. <laughs> so, needless to say, I am very happy with the results. Um, at about two months after I did the official measure, and like I said, I measured at 34 double D, which I do not think I'm a 34 double D. The surgical bra, um, I wore that probably for like two weeks. And then I wore bras with no wire up until 30 days when I saw the doctor and he told me I could start wearing bras with wire because obviously the incision was up under here. Here, They were done um, on oh, under the muscle. So that's it, that's it, under the muscle. The reason why people are like, go big is because under the muscle, the implant actually gets smaller because it's, it doesn't look as big as you thought it was when you're trying them on in a sports bra, basically on top of your skin. Under the muscle is what makes the implant kind of get smaller. And so, let me see. I don't even know what my um, incision looks like now. I have no idea. Okay, so you can't really see it. It's a shadow. You can't really see the incision or whatever. It's it's a little shadow right there. So yeah, these titties is sitting, bitch. You can't tell me nothing. Okay, let me let me get back. Let me get back focused. Okay. Let okay, so I was <laughs> a freaking mess because the implants were under the muscle. That's why they felt hard initially like when i first like the first uh, i don't even know when they really truly softened up because i just stopped thinking about it like if you overly think stuff then it's just gonna just eat you up so i told myself just it's gonna happen they're gonna drop everything is gonna be cool and my right side took longer to drop and settle and fluff um before my left and that's because i'm right-handed and there's you just have no idea the types of maneuvers that you do it's contracting muscles you don't think about it um until you're in a situation where it makes sense it makes sense that i'm moving and this is making the muscle tighten and, and contract and all of that stuff so the only bad thing through the recovery was like the first two weeks i called them zings i don't know if i heard that somewhere but it makes absolute sense like i would just be sitting down in the bed walking doing whatever and it would be like i won't even say it's a spasm because spasms to me don't hurt 
it would be like zzz, 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 and it would feel it would be like come on just like that and you would be like oh shit you know and it would be just like kind of just up in here and I can't even say it was because I was moving or I was doing this I don't even know what brought it on but I'm pretty sure that has to do with like your tissues and everything trying to heal itself back up on the inside and and the capsule building around the freaking implant I'm sure it's stuff like that I don't know because I didn't look it up but I heard on other videos it is very very common but all of that went away um, I took pain medicine maybe I don't know four days maybe four days and I probably didn't even need to take it that often um, that long because I was just scared I'm like shit let me take this medicine before the pain actually comes so thankfully it's been a year I haven't had any issues or concerns um it's it's different for sure I'll go my pros are I'm happy I did this the size is perfect I have no interest in going bigger none at all I hear about boob greed all the time I have no interest in going bigger I'm completely satisfied I have something I never had before um obviously um everyone is built different so my chest wall the space here is wider um than the next woman or the next woman so the way my breasts they fall and i have like space in the middle like they're not just pushed up together all the time a bra keeps them together you know but i can still go without a bra because they're sitting okay they are sit sing okay <laughs> oh that was wrong with me and uh i'm like so freaking so happy of that i did this for myself and um the only con call me crazy but the only con is <laughs> i'm gonna say it in my carisha voice sometimes i feel like my upper body <laughs> is hella big like I just be like oh girl you look full like that upper body is just it, 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 it hit different when you got you know <laughs> that upper body is like yeah sometimes I look at myself I'm like girl you look like a linebacker but I can't really look like a linebacker because that shoulders makes no sense but that's how I feel like I look I look if you didn't know that I had breast augmentation surgery, you wouldn't think that I did because I feel like the size, I feel like everything matches my physique. I won't even say I feel, I know it matches my physique because so many people are just like, I tell them and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. They're like, nah, but they match you so well. And I'm just like, hey, okay. Um, so that's really it um thank i'm thankful everything went well i haven't developed any type of sickness of autoimmune disease i know that there is that breast implant sickness i've read all up on about that like i did my research for everything and i will say this if my health says these got to go oh they got to go okay I'm not hanging on to no titties just to be out here looking cute and be able to wear cute shirts and dresses and stuff but don't have to have a bra on. No, they can go. I'll have flapjacks if my health is in order. But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, of course, I flooded this video as, with as many pictures as I could. I hope I really went over everything as much as I could think of. I'm sure there's something I forgot, but I appreciate you guys' support. And I will check you guys out soon on my next video.